How's it going, everyone? I'm Nostalgic Dave, and welcome back aboard the Nostalgia Train. Okay, so I was just setting this up, and that popped up. Um, what time is it? I don't know. Uh, 8.10 p.m. Does anyone really truly know? Of course they don't. Nobody knows anything. DualShock disconnected. Oops. Eh. Luckily, it's fully charged anyway. Nobody knows anything, apparently. Wow. You and I don't even know each other. We're like strangers, yeah? Yeah. Sure, I've adjusted all the game settings to your exact specif uh, specifications, but who hasn't? I can think of several. It's just what I do. Like a day job. And now, the job is over. There's no more information for me to gather. I've collected all the data on you that I can't. What? I still don't really know you. And you don't know me. And neither of us know what time it is. I just told you. Well, I mean, it's past since, but it's 8-11. Bruh. I guess some settings are just unsettable. But if I'm being totally honest... The clock doesn't do anything in the game anyway. You won't have me here when the game starts next time. But that's okay. Video games were meant to be played alone. <laughs> Ball! You like being alone, don't you? No. That's maybe the only information I really learned about you. Oh, see? Screw you! Well, it's time for me to leave. Good! There's still one more setting that we need to adjust, but it may take a little time before I'm ready for that. It's not really in my job description, but that's okay. What setting? Perhaps you'll see me again. If you can find me. Talk soon. Who are you? Don't be surprised if Pink Fox comes running in the door at some point, just hugging me from behind, because... Alright. Stanley Parable, and we're finally, after so long, doing the opposite of what the narrator says. Okay, so now that we've done all the, um... All of his co-workers were gone. What Shut up. Mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Shut up, dude. I'm not just looking just cause. Okay, so I don't think it was... There's a specific computer I'm looking for. It's... Whoa. Corner of the wall. Corner of the door. Okay, that's off, but that's not what I was looking for. Um, somehow, it's not here. Hmm. All right, well, I guess I'll do the sending later. Then again, the thing I'm looking for isn't when really... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, I've done all of... I've done everything you wanted me to. Now I'm going to start doing all of it. This way. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. Yeah, I know. Stanley knew it perfectly well. Yeah, that is accurate. Stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Eh, I'll stop by, but ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley uh, simply stood here, drinking it all in. I wouldn't really call this room beautiful. Can I get a soda, please? Yeah. Wait, what the? Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Nah. Really worth it. Bruh, I'm looking at the fact that I'm, like, bouncing here. I swear, it looks like I'm jumping. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. But at last, 
he'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Um, pardon? Can I try to get on these boxes? Nope. That's a long way down. Uh, hello? Why are there no railings here? Here, I'm just gonna, like, I'm gonna walk on the edge of glory. I'm probably on the very edge. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I feel like any further. Oh. Wait, the what the who? Can I. Whoa! I don't think I was supposed to be allowed to do that. <laughs> uh... Stanley had now gotten himself so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun to plot so far off the beaten path that it seemed the office had begun to plot so far off the beaten path. Okay, narrator, where are you? I'm not falling for that. Come out. Come out, come out, wherever you are. You didn't think I was actually just a recording, did you? No. What a silly and trite explanation that would be. All the back and forth between you and me, all the absurd adventures we've been through, and it all turns out I'm just a tape recording? That would be kind of funny. Then I could actually turn him off. I bet that's the kind of twist you think is revelatory. I bet each and every time you watch a movie where it turns out all to be in the main character's imagination, you must absolutely bolt off the couch in pure shock at the phenomenal and intricate storytelling. It must be so simple to be you. Uh, excuse me, there are times where people can actually make delights. that work. How much when more that happens, yes, that's, that's my response. Also, oh. shut up. Sad. Look what you've done to me. This is all your fault. <laughs> okay, I think that's the end of that route. That was interesting. I've not seen that ending before. What was that? I go into a ventilation that's under my feet and suddenly that? Okay, well. Next spot. Wow. Yes. This room. Wow. But no, that room. Took the oh. door on his left. No. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Warning. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift. Eh, I'll take my chances. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I mean, there's a door open there. Can't I just... I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story... I'm going to try to land on that from here. You, oh, could you... But in his eagerness to prove that he's Ow. in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Shut up! <laughs> I I know I pulled a big dumb. You hush. Stanley was so bad at following directions. It's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. You are an a hole. You know that. Fine. Look, Stanley, you know what? I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really. Are you? I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Who's her? Is it, Stanley? Your 
your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. Who's her? That's her uh, You need to be the one to do this. Now I'm gonna run. Out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Fine. I'll trust you this one last time. Right? Ah! <laughs> okay. Huh? Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pouring the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... Do, do, do. <laughs> I knew I should. Uh, oh. Screw you. I knew I couldn't trust you. Who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. No! Screw you! Sorry, but you're in my story now. Oh, boy. I'm kind of scared. I feel like I'm going to walk in there and there's just gonna, a bomb's going to explode in the middle of like this is, uh, this is a very Team Fortress story, Two or something. Of a man named Stanley. Good morning, employee four two seven. Press X on your controller. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Please press square. Look at okay. him. Whoa. Pushing buttons, doing oh, exactly boy. what he's told to do. Now he's pushing buttons. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Um, I haven't. I feel like I was forced into this. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreams of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. Was it though? He returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Can I just leave? And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished. Off the face of the earth. Are you describing what I'm at? What's actually going on? Like, am I legit? Is my character legitimately just sitting at a desk imagining this stuff? That's it. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely oh even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. Oh, boy. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it Where with... Where did my kitchen go? Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. Hey. Down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. Yeah, I remember that. The baby, and he called it the Stanley Parable. Okay, then. Tell your kids a story. What kids? They got a mannequin of a woman. Um, a coffee chair. A desk. A uh, bar stool? I don't know. It was such a wonderful and fantasy. a bunch of so in his head, filing he ca file again. cabinets. And then again, and again, over and over, oh, pushing boy. beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's Let an answer to some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Tell your wife you love her. She's not home. But there is no answer. 
How could there possibly be? And the mannequin's gone. We always have. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Okay, so my character's basically going through psychosis. And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. Wait, hold on. I, I'm done listening to you. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's oh, asking to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Question nothing. I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose. The same as okay. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe he'll smile at me. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. Excuse me? Pushed a button. And I could Okay, let's see what happens when you pull the plug. After that, we'll be done with this for today. That's so, Stanley. Oh, no, 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 you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? Yes. Well, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't I've know been doing possible. that for, well, for the most part this entire episode. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife. Bull. The two pledge themselves to one another. Bull. He comes in, take to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? It's more Why correct than what you're telling me. Anything? I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... Hi. Oh, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you I mean, dude, the, choices, the fact you that you're noticing this now, six episodes later, even the most right, basic six, right? I gotta look this up. Hold decision. up, hold up, hold up. Or do you we need to look this up. The severity of the situation. Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this console in the video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Well, Allow you don't make sense. I mean, you're not, wait, you're not real. Never why mind. you cannot continue talking. Uh, Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness. Is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. What is that? No! No! Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis Apparently is the part to All a right. healthy decision-making process. I didn't even bother to look. I was gonna look there. Making at least eight choices per day. Okay, what ep what episode you make are we more on than here? Eight, less, and finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember 
that in the five. infinite state, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the <sighs> subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. <sighs> ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a uh. result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. Okay. Well, don't push me. Uh, I forgot there was a garage here. Now we're following proper health regulations. Well, choices are meaningful. We can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. You should have done this in the first place. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction. This, this right place. here. This is why I don't trust you. This place is not well equipped to deal with reality. <clears throat> don't care what you say. I still don't trust you. I don't think it's starting to look normal again, though. Ah, I can't go back. Okay, I'm just gonna assume I can't go backwards. I can't yes, backtrack. There. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Oh boy. All right, fine. I'm assuming I'm unable to All actually you do, do is that. Exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you have the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a center... What was that sound? Doors, he entered the door on his left. Fine. I feel like if I don't listen to him, it's just going to cause a problem. Yet there was not a single person here either. Huh? Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find coming to a staircase. Stanley walked upstairs. Yeah, yeah, I've heard the story already. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely you expect all the me to, to put voice and recognition he knew the into a game that's probably not programmed for that. Shark 115. Shark 115. still worked. There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. No. 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 Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. I can't. Look. Right there on the wall. Watch this. Night Shark 115. Five. Nothing. I'm sorry. Is there a problem? Yes. You didn't mishear me, did you? No. Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. All trust gone. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I do. I ask you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You to humiliate you. You could have gone through the door on the right. And that's what we're going to be doing from here until... Over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... Would behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always uh -huh. putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just what follow my the... lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. 
that, but... Uh... No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. What is it? After everything we've talked about, that you, my story, you destroyed my work. Why? For what? Okay. What did you get out of that? Lick what did you think was doors, so special about uh, the slick. game I've done? Left here like so much garbage. It's well, it's worthless now. And what am I You're welcome. to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? Yeah. Know that my story is now incorrect. How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better Whoa. to willingly destroy all of my work? Oh, heaven no. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. Um. Excuse me, what? Trust you no more. Now look where we are. My entire game is this. What do I say like that? It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you run it into the ground. What, yeah, you, you can't deserve it, you butthole. Just had to see. Yep. Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley. No. Nope. He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. Mm, okay. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you. You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked. Yeah, so okay. I've seen it. It I takes two so minutes. It's not. Be... Are we done? When you think there. Oh, oh, nope. Not doing this. Leaving this here. Thanks for watching this episode, guys. If you liked it, make sure to push that like button, and so far you can't see it anymore. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. This was a bit lengthier of a one, but you know what? Nah. And no, it's not the end. You can say that, but no, it's not. But if you want to check out any other uh, stuff that this train has gone by that's, you know, indie game, click the link in the bottom right corner, train take you to that destination. Or if you missed any of the stops on this ride, click the link across right here, and the train take you there. Next time we'll do nothing the narrator says. But in the meantime, train's on to its next destination, so we hope to catch you guys in another ride. Bye!